Sonic's Green Hills Adventures Season 1 Chapter 13, Movie a Marathon Weekend. Sonic's Point of View. It's had been a nice week. Now there's the Movie Marathon Weekend with Crystal, Joy, and Marina, and I for one couldn't wait. So to cope with waiting, I went for a morning run. When I got back, I saw that breakfast was ready. Good morning, pretzel lady, I said sweetly as I sat down at the dining table. Good morning, Sonic. So how was your run this morning? Pretzel Lady asked me happily as she gave me my breakfast. It was so refreshing, and I'm so excited for the movie marathon weekend today. I replied energetically as I ate my breakfast. Two hours later, there was a knock at the door, so I answered it and saw it was Marina. Hey, Mar how are you this morning? I asked excitedly. I'm doing right, my parents, and I came to bring you to her house for the marathon. Marina explained enthusiastically. All right, let's do this, I exclaimed as I bumped my fist in the air. Then I spun off to my cave to grab my backpack filled with what I'd need since would be staying at Marina's place for the whole weekend that included my rings. Then I ran over Pretzel Lady and Donut Lord, who just finished getting ready for the day. Well, guys, Marina is here to take me to her place, so goodbye and see you Sunday night. I love you guys, and we hugged goodbye. Then I ran back over to Marina. You ready to go? Marina asked happily. I was born, idiot, I replied with a confident smirk as we ran over to her parents' car. Hey, Zani, poor Marina's parents. I'm Annalise, and this is my husband, Josh. Annalise explained as we got into the car. Hi, it's nice to meet you, I said happily as Annalise started the car. All right, next stop is Crystal's house. Marina exclaimed happily, and so ten minutes later we arrived at Crystal's house. Hey, Crystal. Me and Marina sat in sync. Hey, guys, I am so excited to see your reaction to these movies. Crystal said it as we allowed her to enter the car. I know right up at that you'll have the cutest and biggest smile on your face, Sonic. Marina replied in agreement, and this made me laugh happily. I'm sure I will. So let's go get Joey. I said once we were settled in the car seats. Five minutes later, we arrived at Joey's place. Hey, Jude, dude, how are you doing? I asked happily as he got into the car, and I gave him a fist bump. I'm doing great, Sonic. I couldn't wait for this marathon. Joey said casually. Then we arrived at Marina's house. Well, your place is gorgeous. I have never seen a house so big. I exclaimed, you know, as we got out of the car. Thanks, Sonic. We worked real hard to make this place a reality. Marina said proudly. It totally shows. I said happily as we walked inside. And, well, was it even more amazing on the inside? Well, just follow me to that home theater I mentioned a while back. Marina told us enthusiastically as we began to follow her. Well, here we are. Marina announced excitedly. You weren't kidding, Marina, this is awesome. So the true question is, which movie should we watch first? I, as I felt my tail like vigorously in anticipation. How about we do it in order of release? Joe replied happily. Oh, that means you get to watch my choice first for Atlantis the Lost Emperor. Crystal said excitedly as Marina set up the movie and we all sat down in the seats and the movie began. So far, the movie was really cool, but then my jaw dropped in amazement at this scene where they found the Crystal of Atlantis. And man, was it epic. Well, you were right, Crystal, the score is amazing, and same goes for this scene alone, let alone the rest of the movie so far. I told Crystal as my mind was recovering from being blown away by this scene. I know, right? In fact, it's both my favorite scene and track from the movie. I will even send you a link to the soundtrack later. Crystal replied in agreement. The rest of the movie was just as amazing. Definitely on my top ten favorite movies of all time. So what did you think? Crystal asked curiously. I love it so much I wish I could go there. I exclaimed as I ran around in excitement. Well, really, I felt the same way after my first viewing. Crystal said happily and we both left. Then Marina set up the next movie. Now you get a C mine. Come on, the two strings. Joe exclaimed proudly. This one's 
Then I realized that this movie hit close to home. Kubo's mother reminded me of Longclaw, and that made this movie special to me. Hey guys, she's a lot like how Longclaw goes from trying to protect me and my power. Isn't that crazy? I said as I laughed at the irony of it. <laughs> really? That is definitely one crazy coincidence. Joey said with a tone that made it obvious that his mind was blown. This movie was so cool so far then we got to the scene of Monkey's backstory, which was told through Kobo's origami magic, and it was beautiful. Oh, this is crazy cool. Now I'm curious on how they make these movies. I said in total. Well, that is the plan for tomorrow. Marina explained reassuringly. Oh, sweet. That will be fun. I said in agreement as the movie continued, and the last sister killed Hanzo. No, that's a fall, was all I could say through my shock. That's what I say during my first viewing. Jay said seriously in agreement. Then we came to the final, and boy, what an emotional scene. It was so bittersweet. The art was a literal masterpiece, I said as the credits rolled. I knew you would agree. Joey said as we high-fived. Marina put in the final movie. Well, get ready for mine, Hako. Marina said as she sat back down. The movie opened up with a marriage version of the Disney logo theme, and that got me really excited. When I saw Miguel and Mama Coco spending time together, it warmed my heart. Then I saw The Land of the Dead for the first time. It was incredible. Then we got to hear Miguel sing at the contest, and he sounded amazing. And I saw Marina singing along in perfect harmony with him. Well, he's got some pipes, I said as I was enjoying the fun song. Then I officially cried as I saw the flashback of Hector and a younger version of Coco as he sang Remember Me to Her. It just took me back to the days of me living with Longclaw and I couldn't hold it in any longer and it caused me to oddly cry for the song reminded me of what Longclaw said in my dream. Sonic, are you okay? Marina asked in concern. It's just that I had a dream about Longclaw the night after I met you guys. I'll explain more once the movie is over, I told my friends as I calmed down. Then we got to the ending starting where the sunrise began to appear in the land of the dead. It made me feel so many emotions that it wore me out. Why well, I'm emotionally drained, that was beautiful. Thanks, guys. I love them all. Although, Coco wins when it comes to what spoke and stood out to me. I said as the credits of Coco rolled. Well, come on, guys. It's lunchtime. Marina exclaimed as we followed her to the dining table. Well, Sonic Tom informed me about your favorite food, so I made it. Annalise told me as she put chili dogs on the table. Why, thank you, Annalise. These look awesome. Then I grabbed one and began savoring it happily. Thanks, Mom. They taste great. Marina said as she ate hers. So, chili dogs with Sonic. That's interesting. What's the story behind that? Ja asked curiously as he ate his. Well, back when I first met Tom, we stopped at a gas station, and just across from it was the Piston Pit. It looked so cool that I couldn't resist, so I disguised myself and went in. That's when I learned about bucket lists and made mine. After doing some of those things with Tom, again confronted us, so I, I decided to with my speed to save us. Remember what I said on the day I met you and Crystal? I asked before continuing. Oh, ye. Yeah. How everything looks like everything else is at or close to a standstill from your perspective. Joey said enthusiastically. Yeah, that's when I ate my first chili dog. I said happily. Uh -huh. That's insane. I wish I could have seen you do that. Joe exclaimed, you know. Yeah, I wish, but all well. At least I don't have to worry about Eggman anymore. I said in agreement as I finished my lunch. Wait, do you mean that Seika Sinus guy who was after you? Is that what you call him? Marina asked as she began to laugh hysterically. Yep, and it's because his drones look like flying eggs, I replied as I laugh along with her. Wow, that's hilariously brilliant. Crystal said as she high-fived me. So what are we gonna do now? I asked excitedly. Well, huh? I need to know I get to do you like dancing. Marina asked me. Yes, I love dancing, so why do you ask? I asked curiously. Well, then we're going to play Just Dance. Marina explained enthusiastically as we followed her to a new room. 
Welcome to the video game. Well, this is so cool. I, I said, you know. Then Marino was setting up the Wii console and put the game in. So are you familiar with the Wii and our video games in general? Marina asked cautiously. Yes, I am, but this game is new to me. I replied happily. Well, this one is simple. Just mirror the dancing director on screen and the remote detects it and you get points depending on your timing. Marino explained reassuringly. I love this game already. I exclaimed happily. Well, since you are the guest of honor, would you like to choose the first song? This edition has all the songs done so far in the series. Marina told me sweetly. I said as I began looking through the songs and fell on the perfect one, Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. Yes, that's the one I said as I selected. Oh, Queen is always a win. Marina exclaimed in agreement. Then we danced to it together. Once the dance was over, it showed that one. Yes, I am the champion, I said in victory. Well, you're incredible. Why, thank you, Joy. I said playfully. Who wants to choose the next song? Marina asked happily. I will now let's see. Crystal replied as she started to look for a song. It was William Tell Overture. I danced with Marina while Crystal danced with Joy and I thought it was a lot of fun and very silly which made me love it more. That one was great. I said falling to the floor laughing in poor Joy. And that's why I picked that one, and I love that piece of classical music. Crystal said excitedly. Well, it looks like it's my turn. Joe said as he began his search. He chose Irish made a dance. It was so different and fun. Well, there was adrenaline pumping. I said as I calmed myself down from that excitement. Yeah, Joey, we didn't know you liked the kind of music, so I guess you learn more about your friends every day. Crystal said excitedly. Well, now let me see how you. This one's a nostalgia classic for me. Marina exclaimed as she landed on Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Ashley and selected it. We all know the words to this one, so we all sang along as we dance, which made it even better. Man, I love this game. It's so fun. They set us. We sat down on the couch to relax while Marina turned the game off. And just enjoyed each other's company for the rest of the night. Later that night, Sonic was sleeping but not peacefully. In his dream he saw the government officials barging into the house looking for him in a hostile manner. Tom and Maddie tried to reason with them but they don't listen and search the house and now they were closing in on the attic. Oh, what do we do? If I leave they could hurt my family but if I stay oh, I will be dissected. Sonic thought as he fell to his knees and sobbed. The door opens and they surround Sonic. Please don't hurt me nor pretzel lady and donut lord. I don't mean any harm. And they just gave me something I haven't had for an entire decade. Sonic said through his tears. The president will see about that. Now come with us to the White House. The leader said seriously and Sonic nodded and followed them. Don't worry donut lord and pretzel lady it will be okay I promise. Sonic told them with tears in his eyes as he got into the car with the government officials. Marina's Point of View I walk up when I heard heavy sobbing and looked over at Sonic. He was shaking like a leaf and his clothes were glue, so I ran over to him. Wake up, Sonic, it's just a nightmare. It's not real, I said to try to help him escape from the nightmare. Then he woke up, his clothes were still glowing and lightning was cursing through his clothes. Marina? Sonic said as he looked up at me with fear in his emerald green ice. Yes, it's me, Sonic. Do you want to talk about it? I asked carefully, trying not to scare him more than he already was. It was the government taking me to the White House, but all alone, and there was no guarantee of seeing Donut Lord nor Pretzel Lady ever again, or what else could happen once I got there. Sonic said as he hugged me and sobbed into my chest, so I held him close. Ah, oh, Sonic, it's okay. That will never happen, especially not alone. And if they ever to try and stop us, we won't give up. I know we were by your side as you met the president. I said firmly and comfortingly as I carefully rubbed his back to calm him down more. Then his cool spot finally stopped glowing. That's it, Sonic. So do you feel better now? I asked him gently. Yes, thanks, Marina. Sonic said quietly with a small smile on his missile. No problem, Sonic, and I must say your voice is soft. 
I said happily and giggled, hoping to raise his spirits even more. You really think so? Yes, I do, I said as I scratched the back of his ears curiously to see how he would react, and it came out as purring. Oh, that's so utterable, I said, for I couldn't help myself. I didn't know I could do that. Sonic said in shock with a smile on his missile. Well, we better get some sleep. Good night, Sonic, I said tiredly. Okay, good night, Morena. Sonic replied and we went back to bed as I saw him out like a light and peacefully too.